let's select that text, copy it, head over to our template. Now we're going to go into design. And from design, we're going to go to custom CSS. Okay, so instantly we can see that the colors changed. Today, we're going to take you through the very basics of how you can use custom code in your Squarespace website. We'll be talking about how you can add in your own custom code using the CSS editor. We'll also show you some more advanced options for adding CSS and JavaScript. And finally, we're going to take a look at a couple of plugins. These are pre-baked custom code that you can add into your Squarespace site at any time to give it a more bespoke, enhanced feel. Let's crack on. As this is a beginner's guide, we're going to start really, really simple, and we're going to pick one of our Pixel Haze templates, which is available on the Pixel Haze store. And here we're going to change this background color, which is blending into the panel here, and turn that into a solid color. We're also going to show how you can use a Chrome extension, an eyedropper tool, to change that background color as well. So I'm going to jump over to a blog post that I'll put a link in for you. And here we've got some examples of free custom code that we've provided. Isn't that very nice of us? Okay, so we're going to change the button color to this example here. So this is CSS code. It's nicely commented as well. So we've got the comment here to explain what's going on. Another two examples here. We've got relevant. So essentially we're looking at Squarespace block button and A. A in CSS code means a link. Then we're breaking down into showing the color of the text. Color means text in most cases. And then background color is specified directly. So we can see examples here of hexadecimal colors. If all characters of a hexadecimal color are the same, we have three instead of six characters, just to keep our code nice and streamlined as possible. So if you're wondering why we've only got three in a hexadecimal system, that's why. Okay, so without any further ado, let's select that text, copy it, head over to our template. Now we're going to go into design. And from design, we're going to go to custom CSS. We've got some code in here already. So we're just going to create some space for ourselves. If you're adding a lot of custom code, I'd recommend changing the order as per the flow of the page, where we may have site-wide styles at the top, and then as we go in on a page-by-page -page basis. This is where this commenting is really important, so when we're flicking through it, we can see what each bit of code references. So here, for example, that's regarding the navigation. Okay, so instantly we can see that the colors changed. Blue doesn't really fit with the website. And it's changed all the buttons to the blue. And I think we're going to go with a monochromatic theme here. So we're going to select the eyedropper tool, which is called Colorzilla. This is just the one I use. So for our browser, we're using Chrome. And in this case, it's on a PC. But again, Chrome or Mozilla Firefox on a PC or Mac should do the job nicely for you. And we can. Select that background color. We can see it's not quite solid gray. And if we go to the color picker option in this tool, we can see there's a little bit of blue in it as well. So what we're going to do now is just move it up a little bit. So it's on the same color tone, but just a little lighter. And now this color picker tool will allow us to select those characters from there. We need the hash in front as well, but I'm just going to press Control and C to copy that, click OK to exit. And now we're going to come back and change our background color in our new custom code. OK, our button's changed. One thing we're missing here is any sort of transition. So this is where we can copy the first part of the above. We don't need to copy all of and paste all of this code simply because we only need to change the attribute that is the background color. So I'm going to put a colon and then hover. And this colon hover references that it's only in its hover state. So only when we hover over the button with the mouse. 
Once we've done that, we can use the same background color effect, which, in fact, even easier, I can just delete that and just copy the entire sentence. You could even copy the comment if you want as well, but ultimately it's kind of that's doing the job for both areas as well. And now we've got the same background color. So we head back to our color picker. We can go lighter again, or we can go more into the blue tones for hover. And I think that's what we'll do. So again, copy that. Paste in here. And now as we roll over the button, not only has it changed color on hover, but we see that little ease in transition effect as well. That's in a standard on Squarespace buttons. We will be showing how you can go into more detail in a future video as well and actually change that transition style. Okay, so that's covered everything and now we can press save. If we go to the footer, it's affected that button as well. And you may decide that you don't want to change all buttons in the site and only actually select the style on an individual button. Here we've got a Chrome extension that allows us to select individual blocks. If you go again, go to the Chrome Web Store, go to extensions and have a look for Squarespace block identifier, you'll see a range of different options available that will identify individual blocks of code within Squarespace. So here I can click on that. We can see it's copied. And now I need to identify this block, the reference point for that button, without a space in this case to make sure that that's working properly. And again, I'll paste it before the hover effect. So if we've done it right and there's no space and it's nice and clean in there, we can see the effect still working. Just untoggle that tool. And if we go to the footer, we can still see that it's got the original color. So there we go, way of adding custom colors and custom effects to an individual area. So that's the very basics of how we can add in custom code in Squarespace. Head over to the Pixel Haze Academy blog post and we've got a number of free plugins available there for you. If you head over to pixelhaze.store, you'll see a wide range of plugins, very reasonably cost. Plus you can find this cabbing template and other templates there. Best of luck and enjoy.